Well, Prentice, it's, uh, it's nice to talk to you today. Um, you know, I've, I've kind of gotten a lot of high praise from you from, from our mutual friend. And uh, it seems like you're doing some great things in the sport of boxing now from the, the point of view of a trainer. Before all that, I'm kind of curious. Um, I mean, you had a, a strong boxing career of your own. How did you first get involved with boxing and, and what was kind of your start? How old were you? What, what, what did that experience look like? Um, I think I was about 11, 12 years old, something like that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But my, um, my mother's boyfriend actually used to box. He was actually a professional, but he was like seven and 14. He was like a, a, a journeyman or whatever. But at the end of the day, he had to babysit me and he took me to the gym one day. And um, I actually went to the gym and ended up sparring and did real good. And then I just kept, I was addicted after that. How, how long was it before you started actually like competing um, as far as an amateur? I probably got my first fight. I was probably boxing for about a month and a half. Mm -hmm. I learned fast. So I had my first fight. I was about like a month and a half. I lost my first one and then um, I was going to quit. But um, my trainer, um, Renard Safo, my childhood trainer, he talked to me and he was like, just give it one more try. Then I ended up going on a long run. So then I just stuck to it. So I'm, I'm kind of curious about that. Was it, was it uh, Renard's gym that you walked into as a kid at 11 years old? Yep. It was called um, Teen America Boxing Club on the west side of Cleveland. <laughs> That's incredible. Did you realize when you were walking into the gym that day, um, you know, who this guy was and kind of like how big of a trainer he was going to, you know, was going to be in his involvement in boxing? Um, not at all. Not at all. <laughs> I mean, I knew once I got there, then I knew like, dang, he actually got national champions. He trained out of here. You know what I'm saying? And then I end up, he ended up turning to me into one and becoming, he's like my father. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Any type of advice I need, I go to him. I go to him. So he's to this day, we talk every day. We actually, he trained my little brother, Tiger Johnson, the Olympian. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and then, um, Tiger wanted me to be his assistant coach. So that's, so that's how that happened. So when you're kind of going throughout your career, obviously, um, strong amateur career, strong professional career. Um, what makes you say in, in 2019, you know what, you know, I'm, I think I'm going to start training. What, what kind of led to the transition from fighting to training? When did, did you know that you always wanted to be a trainer? Um, I kind of, I always was good at even like the people I used to spar, I see people in the gym, like I'm always trying to help. Like I always, I like to teach. Mm -hmm. So I kind of always figured I was going to be a trainer someday, but I didn't know right now. <laughs> so, so it ended up being right now because, um, Terrell Boucher, um, mm -hmm. the one I'm, 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 I'm having trained now, um, before, you know, we grew up together. He bought, we boxed on the same team under Renard Safa. Mm -hmm. So, um, but he ended up going to the Olympics, moving out and, you know, starting his, keeping his career out here in California. So um, he was having trouble fighting left-handers. So I used to call him and tell him like, this is what you got to do. But telling somebody and actually being with them, helping them, you know what I'm saying, incorporate into their game is two different things. Like it's impossible to just tell somebody what to do over the phone. So, um, when he was uh, when he got the call, he was gonna fight Jamonte Clark. He he called me like, "Yo, I'm about to fight a left hander. Can you come down and help?" I was like, "Yeah, I got you." So then I came down, helped him. Um, so he was averaging one jab around against left handers. Because mm -hmm. when I went back and watched the fight, but about the time they made that comment, he was already about four jabs in in the first round. You know what I'm saying? So just went out there, taught him a little thing that really improved this, you know what I'm saying, his game again. So left-handers, and he stopped him in the second round. And then after that, it's just, it's just what it's been. And then I finally moved from California back home to Ohio to Cleveland. Uh, so I would get closer to my mother. But ever since Tiger Johnson was like 16, he told me he wanted me to help train with, 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 with Safa, with my childhood coach. So. Was it was it kind of like a big brother little brother thing when you were in the gym with with Tiger at a young age? Um, when I yeah for sure he one hundred percent like my little brother. 
And, and did you know from that time, seeing this kid in the gym that, that he had that potential for, for greatness? Um, yeah, you could see it. You could see it early. He was, he would been a national champ since he was 15, maybe all the way until he went to Olympics. He was always number one in the country. So it was, it was, it was just basically common sense. Like, yeah, he is going to stay number one. Well, and, and I know, I mean, you've, you've been, uh, you know, at your time in golden gloves in 2005, as you said, Terrell Gaucher has, has done incredible things. When you see a fighter like Tiger as a young kid, it, obviously one part of its physical talent, but the mental aspect and the ability to learn and to strategize within the ring, um, how vital is that? And, and when do you kind of pick up that, whoa, like he, he's doing something special in there that, that's created up here. Um, how, how, how does that come about? And when do you start seeing that within him? Um, not just with him, but with anybody, you can always tell when like, okay, well, the special ones anyway, you could mm-hmm. just like, you could just see when it clicked, you could be like, okay, yeah, he got it. Like some, mm-hmm. you could tell right out the gate. Some people, it takes a while and then automatically you just start seeing a dominance. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You see him thinking three, four steps ahead. So everybody, but everybody's time is different. Everybody don't learn as fast as the others. I know from your time in the Bay Area, you had a lot of a lot of time around legendary cut man, Mike Basil. Um, I heard he was one of the voices kind of telling you, like, you know what? One day you're going to be a coach. Um, do you remember that time, him telling you that? And, and what was that experience like? And did his words, because it was coming from him, did that kind of stick in your ear a little bit more? Um, I guess when he, when he first said it, because, you know, I wasn't even thinking. I was still boxing. I was still mm-hmm. in the midst of my career. When he told me, I'm like, and maybe, you know what I'm saying? But like, I just really, like, whatever. But mm-hmm. he just reminded me at um, Tiger last fight because he, he was doing cuts out in Oklahoma. Um, he, he sent, he, I seen him, we was talking for a minute, and then he just told me, he was like, hey, I told you you was always going to be here. So it was like, 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 how he's psychic or something. <laughs> That's he's incredible. Like, you know, yeah, he was like, I told you, you was always going to be here. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and life works in weird ways. I mean, it, it's interesting. I mean, you're at one point the young kid who Coach Sappho is working with, and, and here you are with Coach Sappho working with these boxers. Um, obviously, he was a mentor to you when he was was training you. Now that you're kind of working alongside him and helping him out with so much of the fighters, and I mean, really taking the lead on a lot of the physical work, um, how does he still continue to guide you now as, as a trainer? Um, at the end of the day, you never could be done learning. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You could never just think you know it all. So sometimes he hit me with little things like if if me and if, if we if we both watch a tiger, we both see something, you know what I'm saying? I tell him what I think, he tell me what he thinks. So he just he keep me, he keep me sharp. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes he agree with what I say. Sometimes he uh, disagree. But at the end of the day, he's going to tell me why he disagrees so I could think about it and maybe adjust the way I'm teaching something to make it even better. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's just, you know, kind of challenge each other. But I have always, always respect him and everything he say because he really know the game. So I could never think I know it all. That, that relationship going back to Tiger, I think it's interesting that Obviously, that that history of of being in the same gym, same trainer, uh, same hometown. When how much does it also come into play that you know here's here's a young man who's also, uh, you know, he's fighting as a, a welterweight, a division that you fought in. Um, those similarities there from having the same kind of coaching experience. Um, do you kind of see? Is it because? you guys have so many similarities. Is that part of why you guys gel so well together? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then plus, even since he was, he was younger before the Olympics, before when he was still just, you know, a national champ, uh, always, he always had my number. He always used to call, ask for advice or, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes when he think, you know, Sappho tripping, he had called me and then I, you know what I'm saying? I just tell him how to, how to deal with it. Cause you know, I, that was like my father since I was 12 years old. So I mm-hmm. know how to deal with it, you know? So sometimes just tell him how to deal with certain situations. So I always been like a big brother to him, but now he's becoming a, a, a young man. We, you know, we got more in common. 
what is it about Cleveland? Because again, I mean, the you and the the people that you're working with, whether it's Terrell or whether it's it's Tiger and um and, and Ohio as a whole in somewhat, I mean, it really is kind of like I know to the to the outsider a quiet hotbed of boxing, but what is it about Cleveland and Ohio as a, as a whole, which is is really creating such great boxers? Um, I think Cleveland just always had you know great 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 trainers, good mm-hmm. trainer, and then and on top of that, the competition in in Cleveland is just so good that you got to be on top of your game. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's sparring each other, different gyms sparring each other. So everybody making each other better, everybody pushing each other at the end of the day. Um, I'll, I'll probably end on this one um, because I know that uh, uh, Terrell has a big fight against Tim Tazu on, on March 19th. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as preparing him for this fight, um, how much of a, of a role are you having in, in his preparation for this camp? And um, what are you seeing from Terrell that if, if people are kind of doubting him, um, what tells you that that this guy can pull this fight off? Um, I'm playing I'm playing a big role, a, a very big role in this um, this camp, actually. But um, it's just certain things to, you know, just to show show Terrell's versatility. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they used to him fight in one way, but he's really versatile, always been versatile. So we just bringing that part of Terrell back. I mean, obviously you were there and you were instrumental for the Jamonte Clark fight. I mean, that was an explosive knockout. Um, and I don't know if necessarily a lot of people were ex- expecting that um, because it was so explosive and just boom. Um, yeah. What do you attribute to that? Is it is it the fact that, you know, like you who said, you know, we're always learning and growing. Is it the fact that even though, you know, hey, he's 34 years old, he's still learning and growing and maybe we're just starting to see him get to his best at this point oh yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. like like i told you it's you can never stop learning and i feel like terrell he always was good but he just you know i bring i, I bring something different to the table you know you know what i'm saying he was already a great fighter the way he was but now at in me i'm i bring a different look i bring a difference to a smoothness to his style you know what i'm saying so we just just working, trying to get better. And yeah, he's just scratching the surface. Like they ain't seen nothing yet. I mean, you you really are putting it together between the ears. I mean, when, when you're talking strategy, I mean, that that seems to really be your forte, that you're really breaking things down. Do you guys kind of sit down and watch film together and, and kind of talk through uh, opponents? Uh, how does that work between the two of you? Yeah, we 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 watch them a little bit, game plan, just throw little things out there, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, except to me, when I'm laying down at night and I can't sleep to watch him and come up with the ultimate game plan. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it certainly worked against Jamonte, and uh, obviously the two fighters you're working with are doing big things, and I look forward to seeing some more. Prentice, uh, it's fun to to see the emergence of you as a trainer now. So thank you so much for taking the time, and uh, hopefully we'll talk again soon. Um, And thanks. I really appreciate it.